G'day, I'm Darren Allett, and if you want to know more about or are planning to buy the Fettec All-in-One Flight Controller and ESC that runs KISS, stay tuned because we're going to break it down and see whether it's something that you should buy. I've remade this video several times because I'm torn and caught between a rock and a hard place especially with this one. Before we get into why that is, let's take a look at the details and the basic specifications about this board. It's priced at just under 65 euros, which is 80 US dollars or 103 Australian dollary dues. 900 dollary dues? Flight control firmware is exclusively KISS. It's two to four S capable with a maximum of 15 amp continuous current. It's compatible with the Crossfire protocol, so you can be running Crossfire or Tracer, also compatible with S-Port and S-Bus. It has a built-in OSD, which for KISS, as you may or may not know, you usually need an external OSD board, so that's a great inclusion. In the box, you get a capacitor and the board. The other thing is, it has one UART. Yes, one single UART. It comes with a stm 32 f 3 processor running at 72 megahertz. Now this is the rock and the hard place. How in 2020, 2021, can you release a product as expensive as 80 US dollars that has one UART and an F3 processor? Now before I go on about the processor, I have to stop and tell you about the one UART on the board. It's on the underside of the board. Extremely difficult and tiny and finicky. Just take a look at how small those solder pads are. That's your TX1 and your RX1 pad. So if you want to use it for DJI, it is not impossible, but the manual does come with a warning that you will probably fry your board. So I'd be a little bit cautious. Not to mention, you do have to bridge the pads to disable the OSD to make DJI work. And I think the best thing to make DJI work on this board is probably fly analog because I'm not willing to risk that much money. The layout isn't a traditional by any means. It's a 25 and a half square mounting pattern as opposed to the difficult diamond pattern that we'd see on a normal all-in-one. And this means that the motor pads are either gonna be on the front and back or left and right of the board, as opposed to the middle of the diamond. Now, this poses challenges because you'll either need to 3D print a mounting adapter or get a custom frame. If you mount in a typical diamond, you actually end up with asymmetric motor wires and also a board and motor layout issue in the KISS configurator. So I err on the side of caution about the diamond. Now, I designed and built specifically the Baby Kiss 3 inch toothpick around this board. I used the B-Brain V2 canopy with the traditional diamond mounting pattern added to the frame. And when I had the motor pads on the front and rear in the recommended layout, the power lead and capacitor on the left hand side failed, uh, failed the canopy and blocked the USB port which is on the right. Turning minus 90 degrees counterclockwise solved the battery lead issue, but still blocked the USB which is at the front. You're going to really need to design a canopy specifically for this board if you want to go with a toothpick. Now, the frame design also proves to be a challenge. The team at Impulse RC have just released the Micro Apex, which has a 20 by 20 mounts at the front and the rear, so you'd still need an adapter plate for that one. On the Fettec website, they show a frame where this board fits perfectly. It looks like it's a micro freestyle build, again, probably three to four inches. So you're either gonna to need to get their frame or have a custom one cut yourself. And you can't just switch out an existing normal board uh, on a build for this one. So right now, onto the F3 processor. And this is difficult. The F3 processor was introduced in 2014 and Betaflight, due to needing more processing resources, dropped F3 support in 2019. So it certainly is old tech. 
Now, there's a strong fight between the need for the highest spec equipment you can find, and we tend to do that in this hobby. We tend to be a little bit precious about our specs. You can look at the iFlight H7 Beast, which runs at 480 megahertz compared to the 72 of the FetTech. And the Beast has a 55 amp current rating as opposed to 15. And having a flight controller that is super efficient and delivers ultra juicy flight experience straight out of the box without the needing to pin tune, that's certainly a benefit for the KISS. But again, the money does come into play. Now, when I flew the Baby Kiss straight out of the box on 2S and 3S, it was an absolute dream. Locked in, juicy, and everything you'd probably get after several iterations of a PID tune, but all without having to touch the tune myself. And that's the real beauty of Kiss. It just makes it super easy to get up there and fly, although the configurator can be a small learning curve. The comments on the Baby Kiss build on, on this video this channel absolutely slam FetTech for going with an F3, while debates on Facebook go into the Windows versus Mac debate. Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. Where people either care immensely about the specs or just want the best flying experience without worrying about specifications. Now, Steve Jobs, when he introduced the iPhone, quoted Alan Kay. People who are really serious about software should make their own hardware. So those in the camp saying the software significantly outweighs the need for the latest and greatest hardware, I'll put this to you. The original iPhone had a 620 megahertz processor. It was underclocked to 412, by the way. And Apple were setting their sights on the top selling smarter phones, the Nokia N95, 331 megahertz, the HTC Touch with 201 for the GSM and 400 for the CDMA version, and the Palm Centro, 312 megahertz. So while the iPhone had the most efficient software, it also had the specs over the competitors. Now, we're using STM32 ARM Cortex microcontrollers, and these are both found on KISS as well as Betaflight boards. A fair comparison would be to consider the Geekbench 5 benchmarks between two Intel-based CPUs. The difference between clock speeds of an F3 at 72 megahertz and an F7 at 216 is the F7 has 300% more processing power. The comparison would be an iMac with an Intel Core i9 9900K and something like that scores about 8300 on Geekbench for multi-core processing. Whereas top of the line Intel Xeon W3275M at 2.5 gigahertz 28 cores 300% more processing power, scores 18,387 on Windows. Now here's the kicker. You can take that exact same Intel Xeon CPU, put it into a Mac, and it's going to score an additional 1,000 points on Geekbench. The point is that while there is a diminishing turn on ramping up processing power, charging you a $10 USD premium for a KISS flight controller with 30% of the processing power of an F7 is way more than the Apple tax that we'd normally agree to. What I would have liked to have seen from the team at FetTech is sure, have the KISS tax, however, provide the F7 processor on the all-in-one, which after all, it is on the 20 by 20 or 30 by 30 KISS FTech FC. It would have been great that the team could have delivered multiple UARTs on a board that you can actually use, not need to be, a, you know, tiny, tiny soldering pads. I would have also been okay to, un to forego the traditional diamond mounting pattern. If you delivered the all-in-one with the 20 by 20 mount, which would go straight onto any of the Impulse RC micro builds, like the Apex Reverb or Micro Alien, and a lot of other three and four inch micro cods as well. Jhemku have done that, and I've got that little board on my HGLRC Arrow, and soon that's going to be ported to the Micro Apex 3 inch. So ultimately, should you buy it? Well, if you're part of the KISS army, then no matter what, you're going to be buying it anyway. If you want digital on an all-in-one, yeah, there are other options. If you want to try something new and are happy to fly analog and don't mind the KISS tax as well as a custom frame build or mounting adapters, absolutely go for it.
But if you want the best flying experience out of the box with decent specs for a micro build on an all-in-one, take the all-in-one of your choice and flash in your flight. The next giveaway, it's going to be running up until midnight, February 26, Sydney time, Australia. Now to enter, all you have to do is be a subscriber and watch any video on the channel up until the end of the giveaway period and comment with the hashtag that will appear up here sometime throughout the video. The hashtags are going to rotate and every video will have a different one and they'll also change every few days just to keep it fresh. The prize is actually going to be a $100 voucher to your favorite FPV store. Well, not your favorite, but to one of three FPV stores. If you are in Australia or New Zealand, that's going to be to Phaser FPV. If you're in the UK, that's going to be quadcopters.co.uk. And if you're in the United States or Canada, that's going to be Get FPV. Now, those three amazing stores have not sponsored the competition at all. The Prize money's coming out of my pocket, straight into that store, and you're gonna be receiving that gift voucher. So, what is going to happen between now and the end of the competition period is every two weeks on these dates, we're gonna be drawing one name out of the hat, and they're gonna win. So, there are multiple chances to win. Every, effectively, fortnight for us Australians, every bi-weekly, every two weeks, up until the 28th. Now, the other thing is, this is really cool. If we hit 500 subscribers on the next draw date, we're gonna give away a total of five $100 gift vouchers. If we happen to hit a thousand subscribers before the end of the competition period, it will be 10 $100 gift vouchers on the next draw date. So that's really, really simple. Once you're subscribed, you're entered. Once you've watched a video and commented with the hashtag, you're entered on that video. The more videos of, of the channel that you watch and comment on, the more chances you're gonna get. Thanks. Again, terms and conditions apply it. They'll all be in the description. Thank you for your time. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, don't forget to send it.